Let's move this beyond the Fed and move it to the market, the rally. Um, biggest equity inflows since October is what we're learning today from Bank of America. Six of the 11 sectors saw ETF inflows led by tech for the second straight week, driven largely by hedge funds and institutional clients. So what is the state of the rally today as the summer officially begins? I think today we had a nice reminder that non-profitable technology and consumer discretionary companies, I still don't believe this is the right environment to own them. Look today at DocuSign down 4%, Roblox down 6%, Peloton down over 10%, ARC funds down 4%. So again, it's those long duration assets. It's not profitable technology or growth at a reasonable price. It's the non-profitable areas of the market that in 2020 and 21 rallied so significantly. And I think today was a reminder from the chairman that investing in that type of strategy and those types of stocks, this is not the environment well, for because it. if rates continue to go up, those are the kinds of stocks that are going to be more under pressure. And rates are clearly going up. You've got a two well, year. Yeah, today they are. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> rates have been going up. Uh, for the better part now of the last five weeks. On May 4th, a two-year was 365. A two, you're right, a two-year is close to approaching the March 8th high at 508. So, Kerry, KKR's Henry McVeigh was on the network a little while ago, said the time to be negative was at the end of 2021. Yeah. Savita Subramania has got her most bullish position in the market in the, at least the last 10 years. Steve Suttmeyer, Bank of America, the breakout above 4,200 has a FOMO rally. Lori Calvacina, more room to run from RBC. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the bulls are trying to line up it, well, in the face of what is still fairly bearish commentary and positioning elsewhere, right? The yeah. bears don't want to give anything up, but the, bear, the, the people who were more cautious sound more bullish. Well, many of those people that you just mentioned have been extremely cautious until recently. You know, I mean, we don't have to go through names, but we all know well, that almost all, yeah, but almost <laughs> everyone was extremely negative and they've changed their tune in the last few days. What, what I would say um, in response, you know, we've been bullish on the market this year. What we see now, which, you know, let's just illustrate it um, with, with some numbers. The S&P is up 14 and 14% and roughly so far this year. The top seven names in the S&P, and we have the little chart, are up 90%. Top seven market caps are up 90 percent. The rest of the market is up 5.3 percent. Can that persist? I mean, I would say that the market can go up, but you need the rest of the market you, to move but with you've, it. You've started and that happening, right? It has we, started. In the in months started. to date, yeah. industrials are up something like seven and a half percent. Correct. Materials are up like something like six and a half. Small caps are ahead. Small of, caps are yeah. about the same. Yes. So these areas that were lagging Absolutely. are suddenly. Yes. doing something. Oh, of course, and they need to, and they are. What we don't see, of course, is a continued move in the last week or so of these big cap names because they have to take a pause. They're great companies. They were great stocks. They were inexpensive stocks a year ago. They were very cheap at the end of 2022. But you, know, you can't have these moves up 90 percent, 50 percent, 70 percent without taking a little break and just sort of resetting expectations. So, Jason Snipe, what do I want to do here? The, the crux of the conversation over the last 10 days to two weeks has been, are the bulls firmly in charge now? Right. And it still seems to be in somewhat debate, although the way the market is acting in the face of more hawkish commentary from the Fed, even in the face of interest rates that are moving higher, right. would lead you to believe that this rally still has some legs. Absolutely. Do you think it does? I do. I do. And I, and I think uh, Carrie and Joe line it up well when we're just talking about the breadth, right? You know, industrials, transports, uh, small caps, a, a lot of these, obviously these sectors have moved well um, over the last couple of weeks. And obviously the story early part of the year has been all about growth in the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100. So when you start to see breadth in the economy, I think that's a positive. Obviously, to Steve's point earlier, there's a base effect. You know, we will see uh, likely a three handle on, on CPI in the next month because of some of the high watermarks are coming off the boil. Um, so I think that will also play into it. Labor, wage inflation is coming down some. Um, so, and, but, but here's the thing. I mean, the co core inflation is still stubbornly high. That's what the Fed's got to talk about. Credibility is still on the line. So it makes sense that they're having this caucus commentary that they're having. Yeah.